Hey guys, Raw Motivations here. If you're new to this channel or you don't know much about me, you might not know what my channel is about. My channel is about bringing awareness about narcissism, helping other people find healing, growth, and change in their lives. Part of the reason why I'm doing this is because I've been on the opposite side of this where I've been the person who's destroyed lives. I've been the person who's hurt many people. I've been the person who's hurt my wife, that's hurt my family, that's destroyed relationships and friendships. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that person anymore. So each day I strive to try to bring awareness to what narcissism is, the shit that people go through who are dealing with a narcissistic person. Well, the person that comes in their life and abuses them, when a person that comes in their life and hurts them, whether that's emotionally, physically, mentally, sexually, whatever it might be. And a lot of times you see abuse after abuse after abuse happen in different families and in different households when they're with someone who has the traits or the tendencies of a narcissistic person. For me, I'm on this platform, like I said, to bring awareness, growth, healing, and change to people out there. And I do that in two different ways. I do that in talking with people who have been in a narcissistic abusive relationship, and they're either stuck trying to get out of it, or they just came out of it. And I work with those survivors trying to talk to them about the narcissism, trying to talk to them about the trauma, trying to talk to them about the bond that gets developed when you're with that person. It feels almost like you're addicted to going back to this person time and time again. I also talk to a couple other sets of people, and that's narcissists. Not very often, and they normally don't come back. But I do put that out there for people who want to get help. I do communicate with them and try to help them, point them in the right direction of healing to get to that correct journey of where they need to go in life. I'm on this platform to bring awareness, growth, healing, and change. As I'm on this platform, there's also a lot of life that's going on outside of what you see on the camera. There's my own work there's my own content creation, there's my own coaching, there's me as a father, there's me as a husband, there's me as a friend, there's me as a person that goes to church. Like there's all these different facets and aspects of my life that I normally don't want to open up about because that touches on that vulnerability. I was talking to my therapist the other day and she said like vulnerability is your kryptonite. Like it is not what you want, not what you want to see because you feel like it's going to paralyze you. It feel like it's going to just harm you. And it's true. Like that vulnerability feels pretty awful. And if you haven't seen some of the videos, there's a couple of videos about vulnerability and how it feels sometimes for me, but how it feels for people in general, or what vulnerability feels like. So let's talk a little bit about narcissism and how it affects me in the aspect of dealing with parenting can be very difficult and there's a lot of people who have been brought up by narcissistic parents. So for me, learning about narcissism and learning and understanding more of the traits and the things that I have in my life that's going to hurt and damage other people, I have to start thinking through how do I actually process this? How do I actually work through this so that my daughter doesn't become a narcissist or that my daughter grows up with strong, healthy boundaries to get her to be the person that's not going to end up with a person like me? That can be very difficult. And probably one of the biggest things, you could probably guess, probably one of the biggest things for me to be able to connect with and figure out and work with is that aspect of empathy. Of empathy when I see something, when I hear something, when something's going on, is that aspect of empathy that's really hard for me to latch onto. So our daughter, she's two and a half right now. That's the time of this video is being done. So my daughter, there is one day that she closed the door to our guest bedroom and the dogs were in there. She still wanted to interact with the dogs, all this kind of stuff. She closed the door and she got frustrated and she got frustrated because she couldn't get the door back open. So as a result, she kind of like hit the door and then she like stood there and she just like reeled back and hit, headbutted the door. Okay. And as soon as she did that, she knew like, this isn't a good idea because it hurts. And so she started crying right away. My first thought and my first reaction is like, well, what did you expect? You just hit your head on the door. Of course, you're going to be crying. Like that didn't do any good. My wife, you know, a moment later, she was like, hey, like she's frustrated. You're like you have to work with her because she's frustrated. You can't just say like, oh, yeah, duh, it's going to hurt. You just hit your head in the door. But that's like one example of like how it's hard to be able to connect with her emotions, her feelings of what's actually going on. There's times that I'll be interacting with her and my wife will give me like tips or ideas or like thoughts. 
my wife is really good in communicating to her like about her feelings, about her emotions, and working through the lines and the aspect of respectful parenting so that our daughter grows up confident and having clear boundaries in place and learning how to grow and process and work through her emotions. That's not something that I had a lot of the opportunity to do. And a lot of that I hid. A lot of that I worked through on my own. A lot of that I didn't open up to other people. So now, uh, as I have a daughter of my own, it's like, how do I work on that? How do I develop that connection with her when those emotions aren't second nature? Like they don't come easy at all. And a lot of times I feel like I'm like sitting down and like consciously thinking like, I need to do this now. Now I need to do this now. And over time it gets a little bit easier, but there's still like that thought process of, hey, this is not normal. This is not how I'm used to it, but I need to engage in this aspect. There's different items where, you know, I know there's one time that our daughter brought in a a glass, um, a a cup of hers with some water in it. And she went to set it someplace and I was like, hey, don't set it there. It's going to fall over. What'd she do? She set it there. It fell over and she started crying. So my first thought is like, what did you expect? Like, I told you not to do it, but you did it. So like, there's nothing to cry about. Like, it's your fault that you did it. Okay. Like, that's all that's going through my head. But I know cognitively, like, I can't just do that because it's not going to help. It's not going to help her emotions. It's not going to help her thought process. It's not going to help her understand like, hey, like it's okay that the glass fell. It's okay that you dumped water on the floor. Like, but let's think of how and where we can put that cup next time so that it doesn't do that. Now I'm saying to you this now, but it didn't come in that moment. There was no thought of like, oh, let me come and like help you. And it was just like, seriously, like I told you not to do it. You did it. Like that's what's going through my head. So then I have to think through cognitively, like, hey, what would my wife do in this situation? Okay, well, she'd have to comfort her. She'd have to help her. And she'd have to help her walk through her feelings and get to the place to understand, like, hey, like, this is okay. It's okay that you messed up. It's okay that you did this. It's okay. And give her the capacity to feel safe in messing something up or in failing at something or in getting frustrated that she can't figure something out. And when you provide that capacity, that uh, ability for someone to say, hey, it's okay if you try something and you mess up because you're not going to get shamed for it. You're not going to get blamed for it. You're not going to get ridiculed or scolded or anything like that. It's okay. And that's something that I have to work on as a parent. Not that I'm actively thinking like, oh, I need to shame my daughter. or Oh, I need to tell her like she did everything wrong or anything like that. But the actual thought process of being like, what did you expect? You know, you kind of deserve that because you did this, you know, A plus B equals C. So like, obviously this would have happened. She doesn't have that cognitive, cognitivity yet. Like she doesn't have that emotional capacity yet to be able to handle and process some of those things. So as a parent, that's where I have to also work on trying to make sure that I'm trying to help her reach those levels of empathy. I'm trying to help her be able to process those challenging moments when she can't open the door or when she dumps her water on the floor. I have to help her process those emotions so those emotions don't take over the moment and she's able to understand like, hey, you're not the sum of what you do. You're the sum of who you are. And let's work on those emotions. Let's work on that thought process. Let's work on those things to guide you to be the best person possible And not just someone who's made up of thinking that they're a failure or shamed or ridiculed or devalued because of something that she did. Is that easy? No. Do I mess up? Yeah, I mess up a lot. But the difference is I'm starting to learn and I'm starting to identify and have cognitive ideas of, hey, this is what's supposed to happen. And as I start to implement those over and over and over again, there's a small aspect that as I keep implementing it, it slowly gets a little bit easier, a little bit easier. Maybe not natural sometimes, but it gets a little bit more easier of not having to sit there and think, okay, she's crying. Now I need to hug her to be able to show her that I care, even though she did something stupid. Like that's like the thought process sometimes. And so like as it progresses, I need to start realizing, okay, like now's my time to be able to engage with her. So she feels safe in this environment to be able to express how she's feeling and then be able to work through that so that she can find a place where she feels safe to express how she's feeling, what she's doing, and understand, hey, there's other options. There's other solutions for us to figure out the problem that you're facing when you can't get that door open or when you feel like a failure because you dumped your glass. I hope that makes sense. Uh, That's just kind of like a little spiel of me talking about trying to be a dad. (laughs) And it's not easy. 
And it's not easy to engage at that level. It's not easy to interact. It's not easy sometimes to figure out how I'm coming across is not helpful or is not safe or is not giving her that capacity to feel those emotions in different aspects. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, I can talk a little about more. I'm not sure what people want to hear about that, but that's one aspect of me. Uh, I do talk to people, like I mentioned, all the time. Either narcissists, a majority of the time people with narcissistic abuse. If you're interested in talking, there's a link in the bio. We'd love to talk to you more. Uh, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook. We'd love to see you there or just go on at least rate the podcast on Apple or Spotify. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Thanks, guys.